Once you have your ham radio license, it's decision time. And one of the most difficult ones is choosing an HF radio. Do you go with a more modest price radio to start? Or do you jump into the deep end and get one with all the bells and whistles? At Ham Radio Prep, we say, look at both. KN4 NEH, this is an HF radio. I hear you loud and clear. You know what, I bumped into Jack a few minutes ago. Let me see if we can. A question we get from our ham radio prep students is, I'm getting started with HF. What radio should I start with? We've got five radios you should consider for your first HF rig. Now, if you're feeling more adventurous, make sure to check out our five awesome HF radios, the DXers Love video that's linked in the description. Hi, I'm Jim N4BFR, one of the instructors here at Ham Radio Prep. This list was created by our team of experts, and we picked these radios with no sponsorship support. This isn't an ad, just thoughts on what we think might work best for you. Let's start off with the ICOM IC7300. This is the radio we picked for our HF Masterclass, and with continued use, we've enjoyed this rig. thing off the display. That is so satisfying. For right about $1,000, you get 100 watts of HF output power in a direct sampling HF radio. Its internal tuner matches our antenna very well. Plus, it has plenty of settings to adjust via front panel controls. We've used the 7300 in the shack, taken it to parks, and even upgraded it with a desktop microphone. It has fun features, like a voice recorder standard. That's something that cost hundreds of dollars for more advanced radios just a few years ago. It's done everything we wanted it to do so far, and we're looking forward to setting it up for digital soon and connecting up a key to do some CW. If there's one concern for some hams, it's that the 7300 is only an HF radio. If you're looking to set up a flexible shack with just one radio, we think you should consider the Yaesu FT991A. This one made the list as one of our ham radio prep student alumni choices. Yezu calls this an all-band system that does 100 watts on HF and 50 watts on 2 meters and 70 centimeters. That is a great option to build a shack around, and I took the same tactic as a new ham. I started my shack with the Yezu All-Mode FT897, and I was really happy with the versatility of things I could do even with just a technician license. Big displays and waterfalls are becoming standard on radios, and the 3.5 inch version on the Yezu is about an inch smaller than the one on the ICOM. They both have USB connectivity for computer logging and working digital modes. The Yezu is about half an inch shorter than the ICOM, so maybe it fits better in a go kit you're making. However, Know that it does draw 23 amps at peak instead of 21 for the 7300, so there are a few trade-offs. The Azu also has a built-in tuner, but that's only for the HF input. With the solar cycle near peak, even technician level hams can get in on the HF fun. You'll need a radio to do that, and one of our instructors suggested the Radiodity QT60. This entry-level option is $260 and is no frills. It'll pump out 60 watts of 10-meter HF sideband power with a 10-amp draw. The QT60 is not set up for digital or CW, but a motivated ham might be able to wire up some digital inputs via the mic connector and Vox options. It does have FM functionality, so you can work some 10-meter repeaters with it as well. If those things interest you, consider the Radiodity. In general, our reviews and courses haven't spent a lot of time on QRP operating, but it's a big part of the hobby. If you're into small footprint CW, for example, there's a whole world of little radios you can add to your collection. For this list, we're going to pick two that can get you started on QRP. If you don't know, operating QRP means sending with minimal power. These are folks who care enough to send the very least. We looked at a couple of options and landed on the Zygu G90 transceiver. Weighing in at 3.6 pounds, this little multi-purpose rig can put out up to 20 watts of power and can work sideband, CW, AM, and FM. It's very power efficient, drawing only six amps at maximum transmit power. The G90 has a built-in antenna tuner, which will come in very handy when working out of your backpack. Many hams who do QRP prefer digital or CW because of their more efficient power use than sideband. 
The G90 is ready for CW out of the box and has a built-in keyer. For data modes, you'll need to pick up an add-on adapter that runs an extra $35. One of the potential challenges we see with the G90 is managing the minor controls of the radio. Tuning and volume are fine, but with a smaller screen and buttons, it might be difficult to handle in a park. Extra so when you get your gloves on. Take a peek at the Zygu X6100 if a bigger screen is important to you and you're willing to go with a maximum of 10 watts of power. The other entry-level QRP option we picked is the ICOM IC705. ICOM lists this under their handhelds page to reinforce its size. There are a lot of smart designs in the IC705. For instance, it's labeled as a handheld because it can run off the same battery pack as ICOM's popular ID52 handheld. The IC705 also uses the same touchscreen as the ICOM 7300. That means you can use the same familiar menu style you're used to if you use ICOM radios. You can even download a 3D model of the radio if you want to do case mods. Let's talk about the specs. This will let you transmit on any handband from 160 meters up to 2 meters and then add 70 centimeters. With broad mode support, you can not only do HF, but FM and D-Star operations. You can run off the car or a 3.7 volt battery and get up to 10 watts out. If you run on a handheld battery, you're at a maximum of 5 watts. Power draw is less than 3 amps, and it weighs less than 2.5 pounds when powered by an HT battery. So, what's the downside? Well, if you're passionate about operating sideband, then QRP is much more of a challenge. Plus, there's the price. The ICOM IC705 will run you about $1,350. That's before you add the $180 travel bag, a couple of $130 spare batteries, and maybe an antenna tuner along the way. Not that it's a deal breaker, but this is the only radio of the five we've discussed that comes with a BNC connector standard. So if you're all set up to use PL259 connectors, that may mean some new cables and adapters too. So let's recap the five radios you may choose to add to your ham gear. For 100 watt HF radios, we pick the ICOM ID7300 and the Yaesu FT991. For folks ready to get dedicated to 10 meter sideband, consider the Radioddity QT60. If you're ready to go QRP, the Zygu G90 is definitely more affordable. However, the ICOM IC705 is an amazing investment in fun. And if you're ready to make a bigger investment in fun, check out our companion video, Five Awesome HF Radios the DXers Love. I'm Jim, N4BFR from Ham Radio Prep. Thanks for watching, 73 for now, and happy shopping.